Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I'm very excited to do this video. There's this new um, website <laughs> on the information superhighway uh, that I can't believe I never knew about until now, and I think I'm just going to become very obsessed with it. But before that, I had to show this off because um, uh, somebody sent me this link, and they said, uh, you know how Erica Henderson and Squirrel Girl kind of started the SJW uh era of comics has basically destroyed the industry. It's like, guess who Erica Henderson worked for right before Marvel? And yes, it was Mark Wade at Thrillbent. So he had uh, digital comics and yep, yep, yep. That's how you win an Eisner Award drawn like that. But anyway, somebody sent me this uh, uh, link a couple days ago and uh, oh my gosh, the resolution on some of this is 1990 how, how has this been around since 1997 and i never heard it until like three days ago so anyway um it's called uh mike's amazing world and i think this part of it is called the newsstand and uh they've got this little comic strip this is amazing i found a website about all the comics i loved as a kid you can choose any month and year and see the comics that were on the newsstands then here's march 1974 i remember all of these wow now here's april wow this really takes me back some guy clearly has too much time on his hands. I'm biting my tongue. Why are like the the cartoon wives always like super hot? <laughs> but um, I can't believe I've never ever heard of this before. Um, but that pretty much explains it. You just put in any month, and you can either see like Marvel, DC. I mean, they do all of these like Dell, Gold Key, Blackthorn, like companies that don't even exist anymore. You see Millennium King. <laughs> so yeah, so it's real oldie Olsen. Um, in fact, let's see how, does it go back like forever? Wow, it goes back to 1933. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but anyway, so this is the month that I actually came in um, to comics. Uh, let's see, Spectacular Spider-Man. Can't find it. Well, you know, it's a newsstand, so sometimes you get older ones. But this is probably, like, the comic that really, really got me in. So it's Amazing Spider-Man 303, April of uh, 2012. Although I think, I think technically when I first started collecting comics, it was stuff that was still on the stands from March. So let me see. I'll re yeah, I recognize that Captain America. Let's see. Good old Spectacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Jeez, when was the one? When's the one with Tombstone? Is that from February? Maybe I'm losing my mind. This is such a fun website. You just kind of like okay. So uh, yeah. So the deal with new, like um Seven Eleven is sometimes you'd have like two or three months of a title like Spectacular Spider Man because they just you know it's people making minimum wage and they don't know the rules so they don't take it down properly. This is an awesome one. It was a reprint, and can I get a better picture of it? Well, not that good, but awesome. Uh, was that Jeff Darrow cover? No, it's Frank. Oh, it's Jeff Darrow. Oh, geez, I didn't realize that. Uh, oh, no, Penciler, Frank Miller, Inker, Jeff Darrow. That's interesting. So anyway, it's, um, you know, you go find your month, and then you get to see all of them. Oh, wow, look at that. Um, so anyway... I ended up doing, I was reading a comic book from June of 1988, and I just started, you know, uh, kind of like tripping, and somebody was saying, that was a really good month, it was a really good month, and they started listing all the things that came out, and I go, I remember all of those, and they were almost all good. So, um, you know, I was a Marvel guy for most of my collecting history, except for when I was like, maybe like Wildstorm supplanted it. But you can go to this website and you can start dialing in. And I am very, very interested in, you know, I probably get an average of about uh, 10,000 views per video, although it kind of wildly fluctuates now. <laughs> it used to be like steadily 10,000 and now it's like 5,000 or 15,000, uh, cause um, depending on the subject matter. Um, but it's still like an average of 10,000. So um, 
I am really, really interested in people emailing me and dialing me in, dialing it in, and, and I can do other videos where like, well, somebody says, you know, uh, May of 1992, that was the best. So I'll, we'll just go like right down the line. So first of all, the nom, this was the later nom, like Michael Golden was doing the covers, but I didn't. I only really like like the first ten issues, but Nom Magazine was reprinting like the the really great issues. Then I forgot about this. Akira was reprinted by freaking Marvel. I totally brained up that. Now Alf, yeah, we'll skip Alf. But here's Alien Legion, freaking uh, Larry Stroman, Chuck Dixon. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Then there's this Alpha Flight. I remember this one very well. James Hudnell just passed away. These, this is great times. I absolutely love this story. Um, Hugh Haynes, and I believe it was a... Oh, oh that was Hugh Haynes? I, I love Hugh Haynes. I, I probably got to track down some Hugh Haynes um, Punisher. Then, since it was the summertime, you had uh, every two weeks or, or twice a month, um, you had Spider-Man. So here's... Uh, oh, hey, look! Oh, you got to look at the screen. You got to look at the screen. Watch, watch. It says dated early October, but it actually came out in June. That's cool. So it's actual June releases, not just says, like I said in other videos, they would put the later date so that people who work at 7-Eleven, they know, oh, when it says October, that means you can take it off. When it is October and it says October, then you can take it off the stands. Um, so uh, then we got this one. I remember this one. <laughs> like I said, these are real low resolution, but you can get a little better one if you go here. I remember this one. Because my sister was actually asking me about it. She didn't care anything about comics, but she was like, what, what happened to Spider-Man? That's the whole, that's the entire point of a cover. It's to draw you in and get excited. And this was, you know, Todd McFarlane uh, doing two books a month. Um, let's go on some more. Oh, God, just keeps getting good. So I've told this story before that, you know, I wasn't into comics. I didn't, I basically had like no hobbies until like April of, of 1988. And then in an art class, my uh, art teacher said, you've got like a comic book style. And he didn't say it as an insult. Um, now I had read like GI Joes when I was younger, but then when I hit like, I don't know, fifth or sixth grade, uh, I got teased for it. So I stopped peer pressure. And then I got back in in like, uh, I don't know, ninth or 10th grade. Um, and uh, I think it was like 10th grade. And this was my first big purchase. So let's see if they got the price. Whoa, $9.95. That was crazy. It was 192 pages. And it was kind of the story of the alien costume, but it wasn't It wasn't all of the um, issues, like chronologically, every single issue. It was the ones that mattered for the storyline. So you got about like two or three years worth of stories. I mean, it's almost 200 pages for $10. But I, I, this one I remember because my dad, I was like at the kitchen table just drawing all day and reading comics and then riding my bike like like three miles in like the Nebraska summer heat. And I got this one and my dad asked me if I had a problem because <laughs> it was like $10. That was like two weeks of allowance. Um, Avengers was, man, Avengers was actually like when I was like starting, Avengers did not become a big deal until like. The Casada years, it, like all through the 80s and 90s, it was just like a whatever team. But you know what wasn't a whatever team? Whatever book, Captain America with Mark Grunewald. You had Kieran Dwyer. That was my favorite of the Mark Grunewald um, pencilers. Although this is a Ron Friends cover. Freaking the what was it called? The Resistors. Uh, and whew, this is so such a freaking good run. Um, and then Classic X Men, which was a reprint. But was it? Because they wouldn't just have, you know, a reprint of, uh, this is, they were reprinting the um, John Byrne days, but then they would have original content, which was uh, drawn by John Bolton. And those were, or, uh, and they were usually written by Chris Claremont or Anne Nascenti. Great, great books. We're not even close to done. Conan, I was never a Conan guy, but Daredevil, this is a cool story where he basically Daredevil had to run a gamut of all the bad guys that Anacenti had uh, established over the uh, past year or so. So I believe she created all of these characters. So she came on huge creative energy, 
boom, boom. All of these characters, characters that are still used to this day, you know, um, Typhoid Mary. Some of these are more minor, minor characters. I believe she created Bushwhacker, but I can't say for 100%. Gosh, look, this is even so good. They even tell you, like, if you want to find what trade paperback. Oh, my gosh. What is this? Series info. Oh, like, forever. Oh, my gosh. All the covers. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, if you have anything you want me to concentrate on this website uh, and do a video on, I'll, I'll definitely do this. This is freaking amazing. So, we're only at the D's. That's what she said. Uh, Dr. Zero. <laughs> um, this was this epic line of superheroes. Come on. Dennis Cowan, um, Bill Sienkiewicz, uh, inking. Uh, I only, I only remember like reading the first issue. Like it was, oh, it was okay. It was like trying to be like edgy. Um, it was the epic line. I remember a good issue by Jim Lee when he was using an experimental style, but eh, that wasn't that great. Dragon Claws that was reprints from the UK. Excalibur 1. This was freaking amazing. This is one of my favorite comics. It was a big hype. The funny thing about back then is there used to be this strong need to justify a new book to the fans. Like fans would get angry. They're like, why are you doing a Wolverine book? <laughs> they were pissed. They're like, why are you doing another X book? Just do X-Men. And they're like, well, no, you know, because of uh, this storyline and we split off and then the X-Men, they're down in Australia and they're like hidden. They're not detectable. People think they're dead. So this is a, a team of mutants and they're alive. And it's like, oh, oh okay, okay. But like, we like put you through the ringer. <laughs> like we just want to sell a comic can you chill out no we can't there's your answer you, you asked me a question there's your answer no we can't chill it gi joe was good um i wouldn't say this is the greatest era of gi joe but it's solid um this i actually remember this issue that's a good issue of gi joe special missions he's click whatever hulk is eh. this is the jeff purvis days they weren't that great but this iron man this one was a lot of fun i this whole run all the ones with david michelini jackson juice Bob Layton, this is a great, fun run. Not high enough resolution to <laughs> see what the cover copy was. Um, but uh, they were kind of wrapping up the uh, new universe. I didn't really check this out. But check this out. Look, this young buck. Cover artist Jim Lee. Um, and they're about to uh, launch Punisher War Journal later that summer. There was like a Rich Buckler Submariner that nobody cared about. But look at that. Look at that. Awesome cover. My uh, Marvel Age was one of my favorites. It was cheaper. It was only 50 cents. It was a promotional material, but it, it was fun. It was witty. It had great like eight, ten page interviews with, you know, like Anna Senti or, or whoever had a new book out. Oh, geez. This one right here. So this is the Marvel Age Annual. It was basically just telling you about all the books that had come out in the last year and things that were going to happen, but come on. And I know this isn't the greatest resolution, but come on. You've probably seen this as a poster. This was like my welcome to comics. This is how good comics were when I was coming in. Like, look at all these characters, all these storylines. For a lot of these characters, this is like the best they ever looked. Like, you had this awesome uh, uh, Cyclops... Um, costume this is how i remember uh you know uh, colossus he was just like he just had like his little underwear and these gauntlets on his wrists um oh actually that's not the best um beast um and sunspot costume but the, uh, especially if you see this in high resolution it's like one of the greatest covers you've ever seen i would just stare at it not for hours for like a minute um uh, Marvel Comics Presents had launched. I wasn't really into it, but it did have a good John Pesiva main story. This is Marvel Fanfare. This was the nicer paper. It was more expensive. It was $1.95. I think it was like 32 pages. Yeah, 32 pages. Wow. Remember in that 31 years later? Exact page count. David Mazzucchelli cover. And it was a story, I believe, written by Anna Senti. Anna Senti and David Mazzucchelli. Let's see what the other story was. Deal with the devil. Chris Claremont. Oh, gosh. I got to track this one down. Um, then you had Marvel Tales. It was, you know, reprinting. But I believe the deal with Marvel Tales is all of the covers were new. So this is an original Mike Zek cover of, uh, of a reprint. Um, and then uh, 
like Frank, the old Frank Castle was like one of the first like receding hairline superheroes. Although he was a what do you call it protagonist or an antihero. Um, Cloak and Dagger. I don't really remember this one. Terry Austin, Dan Lawless. I don't think I ever read it. I always felt like Cloak, Cloak and Dagger were more like DC characters. Um, New Mutants. Come on, Louis Louis Simonson, Brett Blevins. This is a great run. Great run, and kind of, it's kind of been memory hold because Rob Liefeld was next. Now here's Nick Fury versus Shield. This one was actually expensive, like really expensive for the day. It had a uh, like a hardcover stock. It was forty eight pages. It wasn't huge, but it was three dollars and fifty cents. That being said, it was a pretty good story. <laughs> it wasn't great, if I remember correctly. It had like. Um, next generation coloring it was like uh kind of like the coloring you would have seen on uh the dark knight returns that being said it was a fairly pedestrian story and even interior art um but it had some good covers by uh, uh well this oh this one was by mark d bright I, um that's actually boy i've never seen him in that style um so one thing i do got to do a sidebar on is Obviously, I'm getting nostalgic, but I've always said I, I despise nostalgia. I think it's weak. The whole thing is like, this is good because it came out a long time ago. This is good because it came out when I was a kid. And this is good because it made me happy and I have happy memories. Screw all that jazz. These all hold up. I'm, I'm only like halfway through. You know, that, that Alien Legion holds up. Alpha Flight, Amazing Spider-Man, Captain America, Daredevil... Like, all of these books that were good back then, they all hold up to this day. Uh, so this is a great Punisher. This was, um, I believe, one of the first Wills Portatio. Uh, There's kind of like Charlie Manson-style cult. Um, Mike Barron, great stuff. Uh, uh, Conan. Gru was actually a consistent... It wasn't really my style, but it was a good, fun book. Oh, man. Bruh. Bruh, you haven't lived until you've read the Ron Lim era Silver Surfer. First with Steve Inglehart, which were pretty good. And then even better was Ron Mars. Uh, I always thought it was funny back then. You had a space character and the guy's name was Mars. But those Ron Mars stories are friggin' classics and hold up to this day. Uh, Silver Surfer Judgment Day. I think I read this like at a library. I don't remember it being that good. It had a really awesome cover by Joe Jusco, who was a, who used to be a cop. Uh, Solo Avengers, no impact, no idea. I mean, they're not all great. Um, good. This whole era with Jerry Conway, Sal Buscema was a really great era for um, Spectacular Spider-Man. Speedball was it was it wasn't good. Um, Saint George was kind of cool. It was very moody. It was Claus Jansen art. Actually, that one would probably hold up pretty well. I don't understand why there was Strange Tales with Cloak and Dagger, and then there was also Cloak and Dagger. I don't get that. I never liked Strange Tales that much. Strike Force Moratory, James Hudnall. Oh, he's writing two books. I forgot about that. I never really read it. It looked weird, and yes, those completely look like testicles. That, that Those are testicles. Those are testicles. How'd you get the Comics Code Authority <laughs> stamp of approval of that? Um, got lost. Tales of G.I. Joe reprint. Uh, Mighty Thor. I've heard, you know, Thor fans say this is a good era. I, I never really cared for Thor. I think the only time I ever really liked the character was the Walt Simonson era, and, and I actually missed that. I just got it in back issues. Um, Transformers was kind of... Actually, no, this is the... Um, no, this is... Uh, I don't even think... I don't even think uh, Transformers fans think that was a good era, but this... Um, twice a month... These were great comics. These were awesome comics. Uh, Rick Leonardi won. And then the other one that month was, look at this cover, Mark Silvestri. So cool. Uh, Web of Spider-Man, this was a great run. Peter David, Alex Savia, amazing run. Like pretty much every single issue. This is uh, not that good. They introduced the slug. He was basically kingpin with hair and he, he could he could absorb you into the folds in his fat i don't know uh west coast avengers wasn't really that good um yeah that wasn't a good it, it got good when they got um 
uh, John Byrne on it. Willow, <laughs> I've never read this wolf pack. It's by one of my favorite writers, uh, Larry Hama, but I, I never read it. Uh, this is a great run. Uh, husband and wife team, Louise Simonson, Walter Simonson on X Factor. Uh, that's pretty much 100%. Every single issue uh, is good. And then, bruh, bruh, the X-Men Annual. <sighs> Art Adams, 64 pages, $1.75 with the freaking uh, Art Adams cover. Art Adams interior. You got to meet... Uh, Colossus's baby mama. Great story. Fantastic story. Just the best. Look, you can even see the three different times it was reprinted. So um, that's basically Marvel. And let me go ahead and I'm going to count the ones that are like truly great. And like you can say like you can read them right now. Like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. This is a lit fun listening to me count, right? 12. 13. Okay, so you got about 40, 40, 50 comics, and I would say about 15 to 20 of them just hold up like rock solid uh, 31 years later. So then we're going to go over to the... Uh, did I do DC or is this... What is this? Okay, so I already got it ready. I wasn't that big of a DC fan, quite frankly. But I can tell you, I mean, come on. The cult, first of all, I've been trying to track down the cult uh, to do some videos. I can't find it barely anywhere. And even the trade paperback on Amazon is like ridiculously expensive, like $100. Um, uh, this is a great uh, run, Jim Starlin, Mark Bright. This is when we were really realizing what Jason Todd was a pill, as my mom would say. Uh, I believe was, this was the first Batman Year One trade paperback. Honestly, I didn't read much of these, but this Detective Comics run, uh, Alan Grant, John Wagner, and then Norm Brayfall gold drawing, freaking fantastic. Again, I'm not the biggest DC fan from this era, so I don't know it that well. Question Annual, that was fantastic. This Superman, this is a crucial issue right there. Um, Shadow by freaking Kyle Baker, that was groundbreaking. Um, do I know any of these other ones? Not really. I didn't really. I mean, George Perez on Wonder Woman. I was never a big George Perez. And, uh, was this the first run of V for Vendetta? Jeez, okay. Wow. Um, so, uh, there we go. This is my pitch for the best, the greatest. Uh, well, they say the newsstand on here, but this wasn't really the newsstand. Like, the cult would not have been on the newsstand, which they're talking like 7-Eleven. This was comic book stores um a lot of these would have also been on the newsstand but not all of them like haywire wouldn't have been on the newsstand um uh but uh so go check out this mike's amazing world go to the section called the newsstand and uh so it's right here um and uh give me your choices for what the best month in comic book uh history is and uh, see if we can kind of dial it in. Um, uh, June of uh, 1998. And again, that's June, the actual month June, not the, the month that is on the cover because this, this says October. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you still subscribe. Hit the bell and like the video to get notifications. You kind of got to do both to consistently get them. Um, oh, now I'm screwing up everything because I'm off my game. I, I changed the little jingle at the end. Subscribe, sure, so subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone, give them to the GoFundMe. And I'll have uh, my next uh, video will be uh, X Men Grand Design by Ed Piscor. It's going to take me pretty much all day to read it. <laughs> Thanks for watching.